Very curious to see where the show goes from here. It feels like, as painful as the last few episodes were, there was a whole lot of movement for Violet. <laughs> that is your salvation, probably. Just fresh off her own personal journey, healing her insane wounds. But it's not over. She turned a corner, but it's it's really just the beginning. I think what we saw was the beginning of her understanding that a, that a, a good life is possible, that something else is possible, that she could still live despite her pain. But that doesn't mean it's not going to be painful. It's going to be a very long road. It's going to take a lot of time. So just putting myself in Violet's shoes. I mean, I don't know how much time has passed between the last episode and this episode, but it's tough. It's sort of just a shadow that's lurking there in all you do, that kind of pain. Yeah, it's going to add a certain color to everything she does. Yeah, that makes some sense. She's gonna shake things up, for sure. Violet is sort of like the angel of death, but... It's, it's like death of a certain repressed emotional state. No wonder she hates the visitors. What are they, doctors? My doll wants everyone to leave. There's a lot of tension in this household. I go wherever I am required. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Why am I? Why do I look forward to this line now? Is it me or did it feel a little bit less enthusiastic though? A little bit restrained? The music in this show is so beautiful. Even like the ambient hanging out at the house drinking tea music is gorgeous. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, like that was my first reaction to Violet. I was so convinced she was a robot. She might be a robot, do we really know for sure? Maybe about the girl's care? I can relate to this little girl though. And she just seems lonely and wants to be involved in things. <laughs> Imagine seeing that as a kid. Right? I'm with Anne. <laughs> Oof. The maid looks down in discomfort. She just wants to help. Maybe her feelings of wanting to be involved and wanting to help are just, you know, reflections of the fact that she wants to be taken care of. She seems sort of vulnerable in this life. I was sort of hoping for a little bit of a break from the sadness. You know, just a lighthearted episode <laughs> after the last one, but I don't think this is going to be the one. <laughs> it wasn't me, it was the doll. Doll said it. <laughs> Keep your expectations low. The doll looking at itself. It's an infinite loop of dullness, exactly. Yeah, I mean, her taking care of the doll is, is it's something about the fact that she wants to be taken care of. Poor Anne, she just wants to hang out. <laughs> All her plans just keep getting crushed. This poor girl. She just needs a little bit of attention. You know, just someone pay attention to her, please. Yeah, someone give this girl something to do. <laughs> It'd be great if Violet, you know, would mentor her a little bit, even if that's outside the area of her expertise. This is really tough. I mean, I, like, the parents, or the mother, and the household is trying to protect Anne, or insulate her from, you know, the horrors of life. That's admirable. I think that's right to some extent. But I think the problem is that Anne gets it. You know, kids sort of get it. They just intuit what's going on. They know when things are wrong. Because, you know, for kids, like, their whole thing, their whole life is, is about relying on their household, their family, or whatever. So they're extra focused on it. Yeah. <laughs> 
We've heard of it. Instant commonality. I just want someone to love me. Please. I've been a good girl and I just need someone to love me. No, <laughs> just give her something. Damn. And a dream was formed that day for young Anne. You could be one too if only you would learn how to spell the hard words. Oh no. <laughs> Terrifying. Is that why things have been so hard for me lately? It's ghosts. If only I had slept earlier. There we go. There we go. That's more like it. Quality time. Whoa, slow down there. That's a lot of... That's a little packed itinerary. <laughs> this was me as a kid, honestly. Like, just insatiable desire for any kind of contact. And it hasn't changed. <laughs> Nothing has changed. <laughs> Not one thing. I actually have a funny... Funny-ish little fact that came to mind recently that I thought was hilarious in light of what I'm doing now. I don't know why it took so long for it to occur to me, but I remembered that when I was seven, eight, during summer vacation, like I just had nothing to do a lot of the time. So I was just following my mom around while she did chores and just talking her ear off about dinosaurs and Spider-Man. <laughs> and she got so, I wouldn't say tired of it. I don't know. She just was trying to find me an outlet for something. So she gave me a, a tape recorder and was like, go talk to this. <laughs> and so I recorded like hours and hours of tape of just me babbling nonsense and nothing has changed <laughs> nothing has changed at all all these years later i gotta see if i can find those tapes i think it would be hilarious because i guess that was my first attempt at i don't know media creation yeah i just thought the world was really interesting and i wanted people to share it with i don't know what it is about the show but i'm just so primed for for emotion with it. it just, I don't know how they do it. It's just like in every frame, emotion. It's just so ar ar artistically done. So artful. Of course. Violet can't be her mom, but she can be, a, you know, a good big sister to her. Violet's sort of being put in a difficult position. It's not really her her role, and it's not permanent, so it's not a solution for Anne. I'm still curious what the letter actually is. This is an interesting episode in its format, because for once it's not really about the letter, it's about someone connected to the person writing the letter. This is about Anne. It might be for Anne, actually, come to think of it. That's projecting. Of course not. I mean, credit to the mom. She's doing a lot of work keeping a strong face. I mean, we don't really know. We don't know what the mom's intentions are. It's probably for Anne. It's just too much for Anne to understand, really. That's not gonna do it. Tears, the anime. No, no, there's no connection at all. Someone needs to tell her. It's not her fault. Even though she's going to internalize it as, as all her fault. Because she has no control anywhere else. No power. There's nothing she can do to affect anything. Except by taking responsibility or blame for it. There you go. Yeah, it sucks, it hurts, but I think it probably will mean a lot to her and will be good for her just to have her feelings validated like that. You know, able to have a, a real outpouring of emotions like a human being and, and actually be treated that way instead of just, you know, a child. Violet, Violet came for the mom, but it was Anne that she helped get some kind of acceptance. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, okay. Hold on a second, wait, hold on. I know this is just splitting hairs. Did I read that right? Did she say she's going to expel it eventually? <laughs> As in a week past? <laughs> Robot confirmed. It'll get out there, you know, one of these days. Angel of death and rebirth. <laughs> At this point, I feel like they're for Anne. 
ましょうえそれからご本読んでおままごとしてまいや、yeah, I mean her mom just needed to settle her affairs I think so she could just enjoy the rest of her days in peace 八歳の誕生日おめでとう悲しいことがたくさんあるかもしれない<笑>頑張ることが多くてくじけているかもでも負けないで寂しくて泣いてしまうこともあるかもしれないけど忘れないでアン Oh, it was not just one letter, it was many letters. Wow. なぞなぞと虫取りは卒業したかしら。十八歳の誕生日、おめでとう。I sure a lot. It was a week? 誕生日おめでとう。あん。二十年も生きたのね。すごいわ。大人になっても、たまには弱音を吐いてもいいのよ。あなたが不安になっても、私がいるわ。What a great gift. ずっと。It's just a kid of her own. Wow. That's such an excellent use of time skip. <laughs> 50 years? Holy crap. This is a different violet than the start of the show. Hurts, hurts a lot. I don't know why I'm so sorry. Thanks, I hate it. I, mean, I love it, but it's painful as hell. Tears the anime. I think what makes it so powerful is that it's a mix of both profound sadness and beauty. You know, like the loss is the loss is loss. Her mother's untimely death is heartbreaking, but then at the same time, the relationship is beautiful, and the mother's love for her daughter is beautiful. And and being able to understand that and have the opportunity to have that gift from her mother, something really special. So it just hits that that sweet spot so perfectly, so consistently, episode after episode. There's such a great hopelessness, you know, that comes about in these situations. To be reminded of the fact that there's just certain things over which you have no say at all, no control. It doesn't matter how desperately you. Feel about those things. They just they're gonna happen one way or the other in many cases. But then things like what the mother did. It's like making this claim, you know, making this stake to life. That that's not it. You know, that's not the final assessment. It's not just that. Despite her mother's frailty and impermanence, she created something magnificent. You know, that in a sense defied the difficulty of the situation, transcended it, and in doing so, gave her daughter that gift. You know, the the gift of being able to have something and to see the beauty of it. And to know that she was loved, and you know, to have a great life and have kids of her own. It's a human story that, that echoes maybe existence itself, you know, things are so fleeting and fragile that just the act of living and, and doing good things almost seems to be this like great hero story, you know, just defying all odds and making greatness happen despite just constant decay. So that in, in a way that I can't explain, it feels like despite there being limits on the natural world, what is gets bigger and bigger, if that makes sense. It's like the, the things that come out of these moments are greater than the sum of their parts. It's hard to really word it with any specificity. It's just a feeling that I have. Well, I was wondering what would be the show after Violet's revelation in the last two episodes. And it's really interesting what they did with it, I think, because now it's kind of going back to what the show was early on, but Violet feels different. Even though the, the format of the show is somewhat episodic in nature, there's also a clear arc. The impact of watching Violet here is different for me than watching the impact of Violet in early episodes before she had undergone this transformation. So it feels like we're still approaching something really great, which will be the culmination of maybe Violet herself after, after having done all this good for so many people.